from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Hello, it's May 31st. 2018. My name is Nancy Gross. I'm with the American Folklife Center here at the Library of Congress, and it's, I'm delighted to be um, have uh, uh, today uh, Joseph Palakal. Am I pronouncing that right? Palakal. Palakal, and uh, Dr. Palakal has just given a presentation as part of the Botkin series on Syriac music and chant. And we're going to be talking about his career as an ethnomusicologist and as a musician. And um, welcome. We're delighted to have you. Thank you, Nancy. It's so great to be here in this great institution. Well, you just did a wonderful uh, discussion on, on your specialty of, of um, it's, uh, Syriac. Syriac. Aramaic. A a Syriac Aramaic chant, chant right? Yes. And can we just start with the beginning of your career? Where are you from originally? I am originally from Pallippuram, my native place in Kerala, India. How do you the spell South that? Pallippuram, P-A-L-L-I-P-P-U-R-A-M. Uh -huh. A small town on the south western coast of India in Kerala. And um, it is amazing. I grew up in the Sirik tradition of the Siro Malabar Church. Now, mm -hmm. Siro Malabar Church is one of the eight churches, Syriac churches of the St. Thomas Christians. Our forefathers traced the origin of their faith to Thomas the Apostle. And that's how the Aramaic tradition came there. And I belong to one of the churches, the Siro Malabar Church. And when I was a small boy, I served mass in Syriac. It was still in Syriac. And uh, we would write the text in Malayalam script. So we will serve the Mass in Avundusmaya, Naskandashmark, the Semal Kusak, which is the Our Father. We would learn it by heart. And uh, we didn't know exactly what was happening, but we, <laughs> <laughs> we still did that. And in 1962, the liturgy was translated into the vernacular. But early on, there was a, an interesting phenomenon. The people who translated the chants kept the original melody and translated the text into the, te into the Syriac meter, original melody. So the melody continued. I will sing an example. Eta pusleg baslama It is a beautiful chant in the voice of the dead priest, the deceased priest. So the dead body of the deceased priest is lying down there for burial. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the choir sings this chant, which is in the narrative voice of the dead priest. Eta pus leigba slama. O church, let me bid farewell to you. Slama, peace. I am going, please pray for me. So this would be part of the funeral rites for, for a, the for priest, priest. In the Sira Malabar church. Yeah. And what happened when it was translated, they kept the melody. I'm going now going to sing the current contemporary Malayalam version. Okay. <speaking in Spanish> Oh, I am messing up the text. Uh, we will, we will cut this. <laughs> we'll, out. we'll, we'll take. Yeah. yeah. Do you want? Do you want to do it I again? I have to sing it. 
But no, no, that, that's okay. Well, yeah. um, because we'll 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 go back and get it some other time. But okay, but my we will get another is, sing, another yeah. song, which is Sri and Malayalam version. Okay. Um, so the would the text be the same in almost in both? not entirely. It is not a verbatim translation, but sometimes the sense is mm -hmm. being used. Where do you think the melodies came from in the first place? That is a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> Are they Indian, Indic, Indian melodies? Are they from the Middle East? Probably or? from the Middle East, but these, some of the chants could be of Indian origin. There are some chants which we know for sure of Indian origin uh -huh. from the 16th, 17th centuries. But this kind of chants we don't know. All the text came from the Middle East, but we don't know if the melody originated there or they composed according to the Middle Eastern manner of singing. For you mean example, the modes? Modes, the mo modes, melodic modes. For example, uh, the, there's another melody. I will sing the first phrase both in the Syriac and Malayalam. Okay. mara. <laughs> Han Kurbana This is the first two phrases of that song, which is verbatim time. Kai Kolaname Belian Natha Okay, that also has to be cut. Kai kollanami hridayangamama vishwasamude dasan cheyum beliyanatha Here, the, question, the answer to your question, the sense, not only the sense, the, most of the ideas in the original Syriac is, is translated into Malayalam. Kurbana was the key word in the text, kurban, offering. Mm -hmm. And that was translated into the Indian concept of belly. Inherited from the Hindu tradition, belly, something that you offer to God. So, belly and natha, my belly, in the place of Kurbana. Subtle but beautiful rendering by a great priest, uh, Father Abel Periyapuram CMI. Do, do you know who made the translations? Yes, yes. Father Abel Periyapuram CMI. Mm -hmm, he but, died in 2001. Oh, so it's a fairly recent. Yes. yes. yes I notice when you sing, you use your hand. Is that because you've led choirs for so many years? Or is, <laughs> is that just help you remember the ornamentation? Could be. Could be. It is a natural uh, flow. It was, it was not meditated. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back and ask you about yourself. Now, your family, tell me a little bit about your family. My family. Uh, connected with the Sri tradition. My collateral ancestor was Palakil Thaumamalpan, a saint. We treat him as a saint. And what do you mean by you say? He was a saintly priest. So, Malpan is a Syriac word. Mm -hmm. It is an honorary title given to someone who knows Syriac, who has the ability to be a preceptor for seminarians mm -hmm. and who can teach Syriac language and liturgy. So that honorary, it is like an equivalent to doctor in our present. Uh -huh. uh, understanding. So he knew enough uh, the, la the language and the liturgy and the melodies. So he was give, conferred on him the title of Malpan. Palakil Thoma. Thoma is, is Palakil Thoma is the name. Mm -hmm. Malpan is the doctor suffix to that. Uh -huh. And he, his, one of his disciples has been recently elevated to the status of a saint. So. And, and, and when did he live? Though? He, li he was born in 1740. 1780, 1841, mm -hmm. he died. So I haven't seen him, but I grew up listening about stories about him because I live in the same, uh, how do you say, patri not patriarchal, traditional property, uh -huh. um, Kudumbam, the family mm -hmm. uh, property where he lived and he served the neighboring church. And I was born in that family and I served the church. And Would he have been actually a blood ancestor of yours? Or yeah, just, yes, 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 yes. Very much, very much. 
And uh, answer to one of your earlier questions before the interview, mm -hmm. I, he, he was the source of inspiration for me to become a priest. Uh -huh. Because my father adored him and venerated him as a saint. And I used to hear all these stories about him. So I wanted to become a priest. And guess what? I became a member of the religious congregation within Sri Malabar Church, which he founded. So look at the design of things. And then for some reason, I took up studies in Sriyak music, Sriyak chant, and now that has become my life mission, which was his life mission. So there's a design that was beyond my calculation. It just <laughs> happened. With that, I want to add one more curious information about me. Yeah. My baptismal name is Yauseep. Auseep. How did you which, spell it? O U S E P H. Uh -huh. Auseep, which is the Malayalam Kerala version of Joseph. Yauseep. The Hebrew Joseph. Aramaic Yauseep uh -huh. becomes Auseep. So that's how I was baptized because it was still a Sri tradition. And the priest who baptized me, I checked by my baptismal record during my doctoral dissertation days, found that Joseph Panikaran was the priest who baptized me. He signed his name in the Syriac script, Yausep Panikaran. What a coincidence. And here okay. we are sitting in America at the Library of Congress and talking about Syriac chants. <laughs> Did, were you were you always musical? Yes, I started singing in the church. Uh, interestingly, my debut singing yes. was in Aramaic, Syriac chant. While I was an altar server in my home parish, uh -huh. the parish of uh, Palikal Thoma Malpai, uh, there is a fee, uh, our principal feast is August fifteenth, Assumption of the Blessed Virgin. So the local sacristan will select talented boys and trained them to sing at a function. And he, when I was eight or nine, he selected me to sing. And I sang the chant that I, we heard in the video earlier. This hymn to the Blessed Lord. On this festival day, let us make a garland, a crown of flowers and put it on the Blessed Virgin. So that was my first, uh, it so happened that that was my first debut. I still remember the tension standing in the back of the, sac in the sacristy. Your niece jerk whether you will sing it correct or not, <laughs> and the sacrifice is waiting to watching you whether you are singing the melody correct and so on. And then left that tradition, the liturgy became Malayalam. I learned Malayalam songs, Malayalam hymns for the liturgy, and continued that and became a professional singer of Christian devotional songs from the gramophone record era. <laughs> My first gramophone record was released in 1977. EP, 45 RPM record. And, and who, are you, who are you listening to? And, um, uh, but, not, but not in Cyrillic. No, not uh, in Cyrillic. Uh, not in Cyrillic. Maybe. By the time Just everything popular, was in Malayalam. Yeah. 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 So I was listening to the contemporary singers and the songs were composed. I didn't compose the song. The song was composed by a professional film movie, m movie music director. And we went to the HMV, His Master's Voice, the company had a branch in India, mm -hmm. so the recording was done there, and the 45 RPM record. And later I have an LP record of Christian bhajans, semi-classical. By the time I got interested in the Indian classical tradition, and there was a move toward indigenizing Christian worship, making it Indian. So I learned uh, that kind of music, and that became part of the, the long play record. Om Jagat Jyoti Om, the Hindu concept of, I, I shouldn't say Hindu, Indian concept of Goddess, Om. Om Jagat Jyoti Yeshu Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Navya Sanatana Tava Satyarupam, 
ഭൂവിൽ ജ്വലിക്കും പ്രഭാജീവനാളം ഓം ജഗജ്യോതി നമോ നമോ ഓം ജഗജ്യോതി നമോ നമോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ഓൾ സെക്കൻഡ് സൈഡ് ഓഫ് ദി എൽ പി വോസ് ഓപ്പണിംഗ് ട്രാക്ക് കോൺട്രവേഴ്സിയൽ ഐ വാസ് ക്രിറ്റിസൈസ് ഫോർ യൂസിംഗ് ഓം by Because the by the christian by community the christians, traditional christians were, were you in seminary already yes 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 i was in seminary by the time mm-hmm. i was not a ordained a priest yet before that i started singing for the bangalore all india radio and singing for radio stations so you doing it commercially yes and yes and then turned to i was more comfortable with singing christian devotional songs and hence forward it was christian devotional songs for performance and for recordings and then cassettes and cds and uh and then when i came to america it is amazing i discovered my roots in this country <laughs> how, how so because when i started my phd i wanted to do something that nobody else has done yeah so you came originally to to uh, because you wanted to get a masters in ethnomusicology tell me how uh, did you study ha- in india also or did I you i studied do- hindustani classical music in india mm-hmm. i did my bachelor's degree in hindustani north indian and where did you do that baroda ms maharaja sayaji rao university in baroda okay. and i had a great teacher uh, narayan rao patwarthan and the thamburu that we were talking about earlier was that was his uh, he was the one who mediated to get because you, you also play instruments yes, so you yes. play tambur tambur you it's like a drone instrument you sing you play mm-hmm. that and sing against its background mm-hmm. it it gives you the drone against like in hindustani classical music mm-hmm. so when i came to graduate center for the phd i wanted to do a topic that nobody else has done and during the course work uh, professor stephen blum uh, at graduate center knew my interest and my leaning towards it so in the samples he would include syriac chants from the middle east i attended a course with him on uh, music of the middle east and he was so i was captivated then i wanted to see the connection between the middle east and because the origin of this language and music is there had you realized that before were you very aware not at all. talk a little if you talk a little bit about the uh, the saint thomas and his relation to india and and the uh, the beginnings of the of the church okay we believe that saint thomas came to india to kerala my home state so mm-hmm. there's a deep connection mm-hmm. there this is thomas who is the apostle the apostle, so. the apostle. who pro- made the proclamation in front of jesus marwala in aramaic his mother tongue saying lord my, my lord and my god meaning that you are a man and god mm-hmm. so he seemed to have he, he's believed to have come there and preached the news and he died in so his tomb is in south india and so i grew up listening to those stories and my home parish uh, somehow connects its history to one of the churches that the communities that the saint uh, is presumed to have uh, established in the neighboring town there's a cross that is a link with it. so he established a church there and there came to be a cross at a later point and that cross the hindus threw away into the river and it came to our area and that cross is being so that cross is a symbol of my aramaic project on the on the web page oh i've seen yeah. that so yes. yeah yeah so from childhood onwards i'm listening to these stories i mean undated with from my father who was a great believer what was your father's name joseph again oh yes okay <laughs> <laughs> i i'm glad you asked that name it was given by mistake i should not have been joseph why because i am the first born male uh-huh. and i should have got the son of my grandfather which was kuriakos my aunt and her husband took the baby for baptism in those days mother didn't go to she waited for 40 the 40 Jewish days to be church yes. yes yes so my aunt went uh, took me uh, to the baby to the baptism and the baptism was in in syriac aramaic all the rituals were in aramaic so during the service the priest in those days they looked up to priest as as we still do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So in between the priest turned around and asked uh, my aunt what's the name of the baby in her fright in her she said yavsep that is my father's mm-hmm. name so the priest baptized me yavsep 
only later when they came home and they said, she said, baptism name is Yosef. There was a big commotion in the family. The grandfather is unhappy, definitely. Is, well, is it, um, it's in some traditions, naming a child after a living person is considered very bad luck? Is, is no, that not, no, not, no, not bad. at all. It's just, just your grandfather felt yes. left out? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. That was his name should have come to me. Mm -hmm. And then the family waited for another few years for my brother. <laughs> I have a brother, Kuriakos, who in fact is closely associated with this Aramaic project. He is in charge of that project in India. Uh -huh. So he got the name that I should have <laughs> mixed up. Yeah. So that is somehow I feel a kind of divine ordination in, in all of this. And finally, Syriac becomes my, this project becomes my life. And for the rest of my active years, I will be working on this and building up materials and creating awareness. And I'm happy that the youngsters in America are picking, picking on it. So eventually, the history of this language and music will be, American story will be part of their story. Now, is, talk a little bit about your teaching, because you're teaching people in this country. Yes, yeah, so. yes. mostly young people. I, when I go for mass, I make sure that they also sing one or two Aramaic chants, as they did at Falls Church, Virginia. So you have your own parish? I have my own to, parish. And how big is it and where is it? It's a small parish in Maspeth, New York, Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. So that is a Roman Rite parish. So I stay there. I work as a priest, associate pastor there. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the resources and the time I get, I use for this. So when I go to Siro Malabar, Indian expatriate Indian communities, I teach them uh, these Sriyak chants. I teach them easy to sing Sriyak chants. So one song, one chant that I teach, one the youngsters are familiar is the Trisagion. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, have mercy on us. Can I sing that? Yes, please. Kandisha Allah. Kandish. Kandisha Allah. Holy God. Kandisha Hail Sana. Kandisha La Mayusa. Israham Malain. Kandisha Allah Kandish 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 That performance practice is something that I added to mm -hmm. Because three times saying holy, 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 this argument. So that is now catching up. So it is creating uh, for the editor that, that that short thing has to be done once again. Okay. So maybe I will sing it once again. Oh, okay. Kandisha Alaha, Kandisha Hail Sana. Kandisha la mayusa esraham malain. Kandisha alaha. Kandish, Kandish, Kandish. Kandish, 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 Kandish. That's lovely. Yes. It has a Middle Eastern flavor. At the same time, probably it was composed in Kerala. So the concept of Middle East, the music and the culture, that was so much a part of this community at one point. Because there, were, there was an immigration of Christians from Persia. And when did that happen? In the happen? fourth century. Fourth century. Yeah. And that brought the Syriac liturgy. And the Syriac tradition continued. Bishops came from the Middle East. We were treated like a sister church of the Chaldean church. So that's why we have the Chaldean Syriac, which is East Syriac. So in the song that I sang, you would hear Kandisha. Whereas in the West Syriac, Kadisho Aloho. So we preserve the East Syriac pronunciation, which some scholars say, it probably was the original uh, way of saying those things. 
in the video you heard one scholar, Dr. Thomas Kuhnemakal, he said, the way we, the Surya Christians, the Kalyan Christians pronounce certain words probably would have been the pre-Christian pronunciation hmm. inherited from the Jewish people. He men especially mentioned about the word Tau, the last letter of Hebrew, Aramaic alphabet, Tau. Hmm. So if you put a dot under Tau, it is pronounced almost like S, S, S. So that's like. why he said, As Atu, you write Aturians, but you say Assyrians. Yeah, so a subtle. Uh, so it is great to think that these people are still preserving that ancient pronunciation. So when the when the the Middle East was basically um, uh, came under the influence of, of, of Islam, it will be the uh, seventh century. Seven, yeah, yes. Um, then then that changed. So yes. so in some the ways, pronunciation you pronunciation changed. Yeah. Uh, even the language was suppressed. So uh, the scenario in the Middle East and Kerala were totally different. In the Middle East, they were suppressed. The, so they had to change. The daily conversation became in uh, Arabic. So they lost that story quite a bit of uh, original pronunciation. Mm -hmm. they, those churches, the Chaldean churches, they still preserve Syriac liturgy. They still chant. But the melodies are very different from what we have in Kerala. So if they, if they watched this interview and if they watched the way I sang, they would say, this, this doesn't sound right. This sounds very different, <laughs> but that's it, the way. It... Is there any relations that you've found as a scholar between um, Hebrew um, liturgy and, and the, your, the, your, the melodies you're using, the, the Hebrew? Um... Not yet. I haven't delved, I haven't given attention to that. Mm -hmm. There may be, in fact, it's interesting that you asked that question. In the CD that I produced, Kambel Maran, mm -hmm. the second track is Psalm. Hallel, 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 ire, maula, de, the malka, mishiha. Hallel, 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 ire, the maula, de, the malka, mishiha. I have been asking some people to see if, first of all, it is a psalm. It's a Sri translation of the psalm, which is originally in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So, and the word, the opening words are hallel, hallel, which is the same as in Hebrew. Mm -hmm same as for the Jewish people. Yeah. Praise, praise. Uh, so I'm still inquiring if that melody has a Jewish uh, root. If one day if somebody finds it out, that will be fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm glad you brought this issue because there are many Jewish customs that in the Surah Malabar Christians, many Jewish customs. Really? Yes. Like what? Like women, not now, but women didn't go to church until 40 days of after childbirth. Mm -hmm. Then offering the first, first fruits to the church. If you planted a coconut tree and the first coconut that you plucked, you will bring it to the church. If you planted a mango tree, you will bring those fruits to the church. Huh. And then most important, we have the Passover meal. <laughs> yes. What do you call it? Pesaha. Pesaha? On Holy Thursday. On Holy Thursday, we uh, prepare a special kind of bread and a concoction of milk. And then we have a religious service at home. And who presides the service? The oldest male member. Hmm. And then we children, we all stand there with great devotion as if it is, as if this father is like a priest. And he makes prayers and then he cuts this bread and gives to you. And you wouldn't just go and take it like that. You will go with reverence as if you were receiving communion. So I still remember that experience of him as a boy standing in, the, in our home and getting this from my father. And you look at your father from a very different perspective, as if you would look at him as a priest. So he was a priest of a truly Jewish tradition and his unleavened bread. And, uh, so probably the Jewish Christian immigrants brought that tradition here, and that tradition continues. This, this tradition still continues in some of the families. Hmm. In the, yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating how... Were there any songs, any music, that was not, um, not lit uh, liturgical? Were there any popular songs or children's songs or lullabies that continued in Syriac outside the church? Oh, I don't know. 
I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if music melodies were used outside the liturgy. Um, outside the official liturgy, there are para liturgical songs, but still yeah. it is on the border on of the liturgy. Border. But at home, I never thought like that. At home, for a mother to put a child to sleep, would you sing in Surya? No, maybe you should ask. There might, there might be all around you. <laughs> yes. Sometimes when they're older. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I never thought along those lines. I should ask next time when I see old people, did you ever sing Surya chants to your baby? Was there any oh, sec or even any secular so songs. Secular songs. Uh, yeah, that never occurred to me. <laughs> okay, that, uh, I'd be interested. If you find out, I'd be very interested. Definitely. You put a fire in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> what else should we know about your work, what you're doing now? Uh, I'm trying to create awareness about this music tradition because the, uh, not only music tradition, language. The language is on deathbed the sound of the language, the phonemes of the language, and thought process that is, each language has its own way of thinking. So that treasure that is associated with the language, the thought process, the sound uh, has to have to be preserved. So that's what I'm trying to do. So it has significance beyond my religion, beyond, it is, it is an intangible world cultural heritage. Imagine if we knew the sound of hieroglyphics from Egypt. Mm. We waited so long till the Rosetta table to know how to read that. But imagine if somebody had documented the sound. Whew. So that's what we are do I am doing now. Documenting the sound. 200 years, 500 years from now, if someone wanted to know how did this language sound in India or in the Middle East or in different parts of India? Then we have uh, documentation. So I am excited to contribute to the treasures of humanity. This is a treasure of humanity and we shouldn't let it go. And I truly appreciate Nancy because of our meeting at the Society for Ethnomusicology Conference. You came to know me, then we had a discussion. You decided to connect me with the Library of Congress conduct me to Harvard Todd and it is going to, the discussion is going to come here. So those, the sounds, the melodies, the memories, the interviews are going to be housed in this great institution. So I'm happy that you came into my life at this stage <laughs> and we made all this. And, and we're delighted to have you. Well, but what's next? So you're continuing to collect, right? Yes. You, and you start, did you start collecting Syriac for your dissertation specifically. Yes, yes, yes. And during, while doing the dissertation at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York, I thought I should do a recording. Mm -hmm. So I consulted with the professor Blum. So I took a, like a two years spent on that. That was the CD, Kambil Maran, Siddiqui Chance from South India. Uh, was, that was, we have a copy here and you have cataloged it. Mm -hmm. So that, and look at that. Most of the priests who sang in that CD mm -hmm. are already gone. And we got examples of vocal inflection because the vocal inflection of the senior priest who sang in that CD is different from the vocal inflection of the younger priest. Really? Yes. So the younger priests, the older priests were groomed in that tradition. They grew up in that tradition. They used the language. So the tongue, the vocal cords, became comfortable with. Whereas the younger priests, my generation, didn't get that chance. We didn't read the Liturgy of the Hours in Syriac. So we just sang a few melodies. So our vocal inflection is very different. My vocal inflection is very different from the inflection of the senior priest. So that CD is a treasure because we, we have captured. Most important in that CD is uh, the priest who translated the chants from Syriac to Malayalam. Mm -hmm. He's one of the singers. And the title of the CD is Kambel Maran, based on the track, that particular song which I sang, Kambel Maran. And he sang that song in that CD. It is such a precious treasure. <laughs> and I cannot sing as well as him because he, his vocal inflection is different because he's used to sing it every day whereas I sing it occasionally. And the, the lyrics, the, the liturgy is written down, but the music is not written down? No, no. 
you learn it by hearing. Yeah. And this is like um, Hindustani classical music. You can write, writing is successful only to a certain extent. You can write the notations, but the particular inflections you need to hear. And, and are those inflections, those uh, nuances, and and when you're singing in Syriac, is it, are they related to any of the surrounding Indian traditions? I don't think so. There are certain examples. For example, there is a there is a melody that is appropriate from the Syriac melody. Adam, this is, I am singing in Malayalam. Adam chayda pirayale vandadum kheda nashavum rekshayunda dayadum. I will sing it again. Adam chayda pirayale vandadum kheda nashavum I would say the people who sang that model after uh, Syriac melody. But, but that is pretty much, I cannot find any uh, more direct relation with that hmm. tradition here. Now, whether the local vocal inflection and melodic formula has gone into the Syriac chant, Probably that was the implication that your question that was. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I don't know yet. I don't know. Um, no, okay, <laughs> good. There is one chant, there are some chants from the, from the Portuguese era where you translate Latin chant into Syriac. Mm -hmm. One example is they use the local rhythm. <laughs> Nes god mayo se se. So this has a local flavor, mm -hmm. especially the rhythmic pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three for the accent on one, three, mm -hmm. and one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Seven beats mm -hmm. into three uh, units. Three, three, four. Yeah. Three. So that rhythm is definitely local. And kol and the Nikare. See, see the progression of notes. Mm -hmm. It is not much Middle Eastern. It is more that that uh, melisma. Kambe uh, mara. Yeah, that Western melisma Europe. is not there. Yeah. This is kol and the Nikare ule nes god mayo se se. So that is probably local flavor coming into. A Syriac text. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are yeah. now that you are asking, uh, there are other examples that were composed in Mahaimani Nan Bahad Allah. This is the credo. I believe in <laughs> one God. So those melodies that were created in Kerala, they used local idioms for singing Syriac text. But this is a topic uh, for a doctoral dissertation for the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could go on and on because you just, uh, we'll have to continue this at some other time. Yes. What, what's your next, where's your research taking you now? Uh, the next step is I want to create an album of uh, selected chants from the East Syriac tradition and put it out there for the world to critique. Mm -hmm. to listen. That is one project. Then do much more recordings and document as much as possible as long as I have active ears. I started late but that was God's wish so I hope, my sincere hope is that someone will take up this as a topic of doctoral recitation and start, start where I ended and it will go on. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming to the library. It's been an honor to have you, and we look forward to working, working with you in, in the years to come. Yes, thank you for this collaboration. I truly appreciate your initiative. Our uh, pleasure. Thank, thank you. And thank you for asking questions on areas which I haven't given much thought. Okay, well, now to be continued. We will continue this. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.